الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الذي يحكم ما يريد لا مبدل لكلماته ولن تجد من دونه ملتحدا وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبد الله ورسوله اصطفاه من بين الناس ليبلغ رسالات ربه إن الذين يبايعونك إنما يبايعون الله من يتع الله والرسول فلا مضل له ومن يعصي الله والرسول فلا هادي له Sisters and brothers in Islam As has been mentioned before concerning the urgent necessity of the Muslims sacrificing to satisfy Allah subhanahu according and even these sacrifices cannot be done without a program but according to the instructions and the directives that Allah has given us of course from universities to masjids there are those tones and those voices and those words that seek to undermine the vehicle by which we can please Allah subhanahu namely the state and the authority that is part of our belief and our creed inseparable from our conviction and from our Iman. This state and this authority was not a temporary phantom in the history of the Muslims. It was a living reality. At the beginning pristine, and later on corrupted with the reality existed in heart and in fact that there cannot be an Islam in this world without a structure to maintain that Islam from the very simple yet elaborate directive of the Prophet may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him when he instructed even three people if they were to commence a journey to have one of them 
to decide as regards the decisions that are made pertaining to this journey. إِذَا كَانَ ثَلَاثَةٌ فِي سَفَرٍ فَلْيُؤَمِّرُوا أَحَدَهُمْ And we take a look at the characteristics of the days and the times of our exemplar sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and we see that the elements that make up a state were present there even according to today's terms what makes a state and Muhammad's political activity was not a religious authority that was to pass away once he disappeared, once he expired. The elements of a state are a territory and a population and a sovereignty and also a political authority that organizes decisions and instructions and in the case of Islam the application of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the lives of the Muslims. These elements were present in the days of the Prophet. We look and we compare that state in Al Medina and the surrounding areas to present day states and we find that population wise it is larger than some sovereign and independent states that belong to the United Nations today that is population wise and if we take a look at it area wise then it is also larger than some quote sovereign independent nation states that are members of the United Nations and the dispensing authority was present to administer the affairs of the Muslims militarily, economically, socially and politically and otherwise emanating and coming from the exemplar and the model for all times of an Islamic state as it should be. And now, after taking, taking a look and a sense very quickly of the Muslim domain, we find that there is an absence of this structure in the lives of the Muslims, an absence that makes it semi-impossible for Islam to exist throughout the Ummah at large. We're talking about the Ummah in its totality. Why? Because the Muslims throughout a drawn out process have found themselves outside of the participatory functions of the state. And this unequivocally is a mistake that began early in the history of Islam and has accumulated with the statelessness of the Muslims today. And anyone trying to overlook this fact shall encounter the most difficult obstacles in re-establishing and reconstructing Islam once again as a state and an authority in the lives of the Muslims. Why when we find the Prophet encouraging the Muslims to participate in the affairs 
affairs of their state, in the affairs of their independent state, which was constructed and structured by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This independent state was not only independent, it was threatening the independence of neighboring superpowers and states. And not only that, it undermined those independent and sovereign and neighboring superpower states in those days. It was not content with being independent. It was not content with destabilizing the independence of counter-Islam and Tahut. It also caused the demise and the collapse of counter-Islam and Tahut, as happened to the empires in Rome and in Persia. But why has this process been arrested? Why hasn't it continued? Because there was a malfunction in the relationship between the masses of the Muslims and those who are governing the Muslims, which set in at a very, very early stage in the history of Islam. And it would only probably cause a semantic disagreement in trying to pinpoint exactly the year or the age or the time or the day or the moment that corruption began because we are not living that particular moment in that particular day we are living the consequences of those particular moments and days and we are responsible for these consequences that are bright, clear, and pronounced to everyone opening his eyes and anyone who is willing to understand his condition and his situation today in this contemporary world as it relates to Islam. Who is the governor of the Muslims? Who is the ruler of the Muslims? He is an individual who has been endorsed by the masses of the Muslims. The bay'ah or the mubayah, which makes him a representative of the Muslims in trying to apply the judgment or the rules of Allah to the world around him and the world around the Muslims. This process was severed early in Islam. And the severing of this process undermined the instructions of the Prophet when he wanted a participatory, a unitary action by ruler and rule. فَتَكُونُ مِنْكُمْ أُمَرَاءٌ يعرفون وتنكرون فمن عرف برئ ومن أنكر سلم ولكن من بايع ورضي and the hadith goes on to indicate that after in time there will be rulers over you who is the prophet talking to he is talking to the muslims there will be rulers who will rule over you who will change the criteria and make what is wrong right and reverse the right and make it wrong whoever opposes that process whoever takes issue with that whole process then he has saved himself to whichever degree he participates in opposing that 
deviation from Islam. But those who agree, those who endorse this deviation, then Allah will cause them to suffer the consequences. One of the sayings attributed to this context the heavens, the skies are on the verge of stoning you. This may be an illusion to warfare and bombs and shrapnel and the rest of the devastating devices that we see coming down on the heads of people. Because in those days, of course, no bombs existed. There had to be a germane reference to that source of destruction, referred to by stones. The closest probably that type of mind could come to the contemporary type of destruction that befalls many people. Why? Because we say that the Messenger of God said such and such, and you say that Abu Bakr and Omar said such and such. Where is your source of priority? These other rulers, these other peoples, were men who at times tried to do their best and who at other times had their mistake. They are not, they are no reference that we go back to and then in the process making the Prophet himself secondary to this reference as has taken place vis-a-vis -vis the alienated masses of the Muslims and their respective and consecutive rulers and leaders throughout this time process. The Prophet says in regards to this very relationship Wallahi la ta'murunna bil ma'roof wa la tanhawunna 'anil munkar wa la ta'khudhunna 'ala yadi dhalib wa la ta'turunnahu 'ala al-haqq atara wa la taqsurunnahu 'ala al-haqq qasra There is no exception made just because a Muslim calls himself a Muslim and he acts contrary to that word. Allah is not fooled by words. His laws continue to be applied to whomever agrees with them or disagrees with them accordingly. لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا أَمَانِيِّ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُجْزَ بِهِ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدْ لَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا it is not according to your wishful thinking, nor according to the wishful thinking of Jews and Christians. You cannot camouflage or hide yourself behind being a Muslim who is automatically relieved of the, of the bad consequences emanating from foul acts. Neither are people who automatically want to be forgiven 
because they say that they believe in Christ, nor the Jews who want to dismiss the penalty of Allah by saying that they are God's chosen people. This is not the way divine justice is applied. There is no discrimination in this process. If you disobey Allah, and if you do not seek to apply the authority of Allah in this world, then you are faced with the consequences that every disobedient nation or every disobedient society is faced with. And that is the calamity that comes from Allah that is described in this hadith by the Prophet. And then he will, he will thrush or he will cause your hearts to collide with one another. And then he will damn you as he has done the others who disobeyed according, accordingly and who did not apply the laws that they were instructed to apply in this relation. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the Muslims must participate and it has to be a popular participation in the affairs of their own state elaborated as it is once it becomes an authority and government or in a raw fashion before it becomes an authority or a government. What's the problem with the Muslims? When there comes, when there appears an Imam who is impeccable in his credentials to lead the Muslims and to apply and construct these directives and these instructions from the Prophet. A fast look at the minds of the Muslims would reveal to us the political ignorance that exists within them that is inherited from generations past and that time has come for them to remedy and to expel from their midst. And this is the time. The time has approached. Let us not be deceived by the comforts afforded to us in this particular part of the world. For the Muslims in their masses are undergoing this process and because we have faith in the masses of the Muslims, we have faith in the expectations of popular Islam, we have faith that Allah is on the side of the community and the extended hand. We have faith in all of this. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala will cause them to become the inheritors of this and other lands if they change this condition that they have within them. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ ادعوا الله سبحانه وتعالى وأنتم موقنون بالإجابة واستغفروه يغفر لكم إن الله هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الذي هدى وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه أولي النفى والتقى
and will recognize the discrepancy between what they were today and this time and what they are supposed to be in the future years to come. They will look back and they will ask, how was it possible for people to inherit a kingdom, to inherit a rule of other people, just because they were organically, just because they organically belonged to a ruling family. What a nonsense and how deviant can the Muslim status quo stoop to? There is no such thing in Islam as this absence of the people from the political realm. In the future when people will look back at these years, and at previous years they will recognize that the Muslims were in these days politically dead. Political dead corpses of people. Our faith is that the Muslims are progressing to mummify the royal decrees, the royal orders, the Taghuti heads of state, the alienating and systematic process under which they linger today. The Muslims are moving in that direction. The momentum is beginning in the Muslim midst. And don't be fired or don't be frustrated by the way the Kafirs speak about us. Have confidence in Allah and a relationship with your fellow oppressed Muslims around the world. This camaraderie, this brotherhood in destiny and in practice has the momentum and the potential to make the Kafirs react to our determination as Muslims wherever we are. They can hide the facts for as long as they want to. But the reality of life is addressing us in many ways, at many times, in different places. We have been the subjects of oppression and we want out of this oppression by any means possible, according to the guidance of Allah. Even if we are to sacrifice our lives to build the structure of Islam that has been deliberately absent because of the tyranny of tradition and because of the camouflage of their conspiracies for so long, we will come alive. We will live by giving our lives to Allah subhanahu. We sacrifice, therefore we exist. We engage in jihad, therefore we exist. We fight for the cause of Allah, therefore we exist. And we cannot have another existence, and we shall never exist in any other form or with any other activity. This is what we are taught by the Qur'an and the Sunnah, and this is what we apply very dearly to our lives until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is satisfied with us. 
اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ولا تجعله ملتبسا علينا واجعلنا للمتقين اماما ربنا عليك توكلنا واليك انبنا واليك المصير ربنا افرغ علينا صبرا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم بك نحاول وبك نصاول وبك نقاتل اللهم انصرنا بالحق وانصر الحق بنا اللهم كن معنا ولا تكن علينا اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك فإن عبادك هم الصالحون اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك فإن عبادك هم الصالحون اللهم اجعلنا من حزبك فإن حزبك هم المفلحون اللهم اجعلنا من جندك فإن جندك هم الغالبون اللهم اجعلنا من أوليائك فإن أولياءك لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون إنهم يكيدون كيدا وأكيد كيدا فمهل الكافرين أمهلهم رويدا وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على محمد وآل محمد وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا حكمتم بين الناس أن تحكموا بالعدل إن الله نعم ما يعظكم به إن الله كان سميعا بصيرا والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة
uh, and also the, uh, the cost and the faces of the bullets and they will go towards meeting the needs of the community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you and keep you in my life. Oh yes, one, one other thing. Aid uh, al-Adha al-Mubarak uh, is uh, perhaps something we'll see on Monday, but we're not 100% sure. As you know, the, uh, the authorities in Saudi Arabia sometimes can make up their minds, whether it's Monday or Tuesday or whatever. But uh, from what we hear, it will be either Monday or Tuesday, so we're not sure. So please keep it back.